Hi, I'm Jamie. And I'm Stacey. And this is the Body Smart Podcast. And today we are talking all things stress. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but we all have stress in our lives, right? We um, do. And yes. it's a subject that we have talked about many, many times because it has a huge impact on every part of your health, mm-hmm. your well-being, your physical body, your mental health. Um, But today, I wanted to dig a little bit deeper into one element of stress that maybe people hadn't actually thought of, particularly people who might be listening to our podcast. Mm -hmm. And that is, is your diet stressing you out? And is your workout routine adding stress to an already overloaded system? Yes, which probably for a lot of people it is because your diet is the foods that you habitually eat and we're all on a diet till the day we die. And if you feel like you've not been able to figure out that puzzle of nutrition... Um, or your diet it can just feel like a highly stressful thing to just constantly be going going round and round and round in circles and it's something that you never you know get to stop you know like that's that is the, the really difficult part of it you know like I always say like if you were to go and play a sport and you gave it a good go and you went 50 times and you still weren't really good and you're like I don't enjoy this you could just give it up we don't really get to give up food so people try so many different diets and they don't work out and they're not successful but you don't get to just give up food or just stop eating. You ultimately just revert back to what you know. Yeah, and so that's that's definitely a reason why it can become very frustrating and very stressful. Mm. I think we should probably just define what even is stress because I think a lot of people understand, oh, work stress. I know what that feels like. I know what that mm. is. But what does it actually mean, the definition of stress on the body? I, I mean, come on, you tell me. <laughs> so it's, it's basically anything that shifts your body out of a homeostatic state. So that Got means you. your body wants to, at all times, just stay as baseline as possible, mm-hmm. right? It wants to say the temperature that you are, the weight that you are, the place that you are. Yep. Like It wants everything to be the same because it knows how to deal with that and it's manageable. Mm-hmm. Anything that comes and tries to shift you out of that. So that could even be just like, it gets really, really hot. How many people get ratty when they get really hot? Because (laughs) it's shifting you out of homeostasis and therefore your body's having to work harder to try Mm. and pull things back to where it feels like it can manage. Um, And so what we actually define as a stressor, when you look at that definition, actually becomes a whole lot broader. It's it's super broad. And I wouldn't also, I mean, you said, we're talking about stress. And I was like, oh yeah, fun. But like, not all stress is bad either. You know what I mean? There's lots of good stress for the body um, and the mind, to be honest. And it's not, it's not always need to be viewed in that sort of negative way. If, if anything, we've probably gone a little bit too far one way where we've tried to make everything so convenient and so stress-free and so comfortable that we're actually probably not putting our bodies, at least, under enough stress anymore. Yeah, and if we look at um, the basics of why resistance training works it's because you put a manageable amount of stress on your body which Mm -hmm. is then a stimulus for your body to respond to and get stronger yeah so if you didn't put that stress on your body you would not get stronger yeah and i think it's the same with mental stress there's a certain sweet spot of putting yourself a little bit outside your comfort zone causes you to grow and get Mm -hmm. mentally stronger and find new ways of thinking but it doesn't always feel that nice at the time it doesn't feel that nice no it 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 but it's not supposed to either. You know, that's the friction that we almost have to overcome to to push through and ultimately to grow. Um, you know, just like it is with kids, it's it's grown pains. <laughs> it's grown pains of becoming that next version of you, becoming that better version of you. And, you know, there is a, a level of stress um, that comes with that. And it's just, I was like even speaking to the side about this the other week is, is that like, it's how you associate stress as well. Like if you ever, you always associate stress as being negative, or you can associate stress with like being positive, like, oh, this is a bit uncomfortable, but like, enjoy the ride, strap up, here we go, like, we're gonna, we're gonna learn a little bit here, or we're gonna go to this next season, or this next level in a professional, you know, world, or, uh, you know, if you're lifting weights, you want to go to that next level, yeah, you're gonna have to lift a little bit heavier, you know, have a longer range of motion, it's going to be a little bit more difficult and challenging on the body, but that's, that's, that's what you've got to do, the steps you've got to take to see that progression. Yeah, and there is actually a bell curve of the ideal amount of stress because there is actually a good amount of stress. And so if you have a small amount of stress, it's where you actually kind of get a bit bored with life. Mm-hmm. Like you will probably have had a phase in a job where you could do it with your eyes shut. And actually that's not as enjoyable as it might sound. We often as humans, we want to have that challenge mm-hmm. and you need that next little bit of comfortable push and a comfortable stretch where 
it is a stressor in some ways because it's challenging you, but it feels good to be working hard and thinking and engaging your brain. Yeah, it's very much how how dopamine works. It's it's that sort of chase and enjoying the pro at the process, and it's you know it's setting a milestone to to go to, and, and very much getting there. Like stop. This is something I am extremely guilty of not doing, which is reach that milestone, stop and smell the roses a little bit, maybe take a little break, not like you know like a, a week or a couple of weeks or even a couple of days for some people, but then equally setting a new milestone because that is what keeps that that driving pro uh, that driving power that dopamine in a healthy place where you're constantly pressing and driving forward for more. Yeah, and it's also important to know where that optimal pausing point should be because it's easy to keep pushing beyond Mm -hmm. that sweet spot and to go into the point where actually it becomes strain and then burnout Um, and I think particularly when people are embarking on a body transformation or a weight loss journey or a health kick they often push themselves over that peak on that bell curve and into the burnout zone Mm -hmm. yeah and it's that's going to look different for everyone it's hard to just give like one size fits all advice here and, and generic advice you know sometimes yeah, it will just vary for, for a lot of people. It's tough. Like I go down to strains of thoughts here where like some people definitely just need to push harder, you know, and just need to suck it up and, and get on with it. And other people are possibly pushing themselves too hard and need to get better at dialing it back. So it's it's going to vary in, in everyone, to be honest. And I think we talk about it on every podcast, why self-awareness is so key. Um, but ev- everyone's got that next cog, that next level that you possibly don't even know you have until you've kind of gone there and and explored that and you know when it comes to the, your, the physical side of things you know a lot of people would be impressed with just how far they can can take things they really would yeah and the really cool thing about stress and that fits into what you were saying there is you surprise yourself with what you can achieve the reason why it gives you a little push in performance is your body's actually psyching itself up to perform better when you enter a stress state Mm -hmm. so when we're saying like all stress isn't bad it's because you get that physiological reaction to that stressor which is where your heart starts to beat faster your bed your blood sugar rises so that you can get more energy to your muscles so you can perform more your pulse rate goes up your blood pressure goes up so you can Mm -hmm. just be ready to explode and Mm -hmm. do whatever you need to do that's a bit of a buzz yeah but it also means you genuinely will achieve more than if you were just in that chill like coasting a long phase where your body isn't stoking itself up to do more yeah i mean we are we're we're wired to always take the path of least resistance you know we just are and it's it's light that's because life used to be very difficult like it was very hard we were constantly having to look for food and be aware of our surroundings and possibly a danger and fear and things have got like so comfortable now they've got too comfortable that now we have to actually seek out discomfort to actually get those same healthy stress responses. So that's why, you know, we've seen things like the immersion of like cold therapy blow up. Like that's a way where you're putting your body under stress um, volun- in a volunteered way. I was gonna say, I, was gonna, I wouldn't have been able to say that, so I'm not even gonna, in a volunteered way. And then, you know, you have a response of that that is healthy for the body and the mind. Your dopamine levels go through the roof, you feel better. Same with saunas, you know, go and sit in the sauna. That's 100 Celsius or 200 Fahrenheit for, you know, 20 minutes, puts your body under a lot of, of hopefully sh- it's not 100 celsius because you would boil to death yeah they're about they're about that aren't they yeah 97 8 the last one i got in celsius celsius no way yeah are you sure that's not the humidity sorry we need to fact check I, I, um i'm almost certain yeah you can do like 220 fahrenheit 230 70 to 90 no celsius. way well, that is a fact that is new to me. Yeah, and I mean, that's why, like, literally, like, it almost acts as a cardiovascular workout. You you sweat from all pore, every pore of your body. You have all the heat shock proteins. Um, there's loads of studies on, on saunas now as well, just talking about how great it is for your cardiovascular health. Like, people who get regular saunas three, four times a week, chances of, like, all types of heart disease just go down, heart attack, strokes, everything. Like, it's amazing for you. And that's a way where you're putting your body under you know, you're seeking out discomfort and stress, um, but it actually has healthy benefits Healthy benefits for our body. Because you're going to that peak on the bell curve, right? Mm-hmm. The good stress side of the tipping point. Yeah. Um, and you said like our lives now don't have those same dangers that maybe cavemen mm-hmm. had. Yeah. Um, but something that's really important to remember is our brain kind of perceives anything that could shift us out of homeostasis <coughs> as a stressor. So that yeah. could be 
a psychological thing. It could be a boss that's very like reactive. Mm -hmm. It could be a relationship thing. It could be your kids screaming. Um, and also what's really interesting is it doesn't even have to be real. Like you imagining that stressful scenario can cause the, sp the stress response to start in your body. So you just thinking about that boss that is mm -hmm. gonna bite your head off the minute you walk in can start your heart to beat faster, your breath yep. to get quicker. And so although we don't have like tigers hiding around every corner, there are a lot of stressors that didn't exist mm -hmm. back in the day of cavemen either. Yep. Um, and so something that I wanted to talk about today is how does that affect your physique, your weight loss goals, mm -hmm. your muscle gain goals? And also how does even trying to achieve those goals contribute to those things? I mean, it's all connected and it has a huge, a huge impact. Uh, learning how to, to manage your stress and especially how that then affects your movement, your training, your sleep, your diet is all extremely important and comes down to that, you know, pill that I wish you could give everyone, which is a, a pill of self-awareness because it would allow you to deal with so many of those situations in a, in a healthier way. But again, like even when you say that to people, like a healthier way, it's like, what does that look like? And what is that dealing with a situation? What does that look like for you? And that's, there is not, there's best practices with lots of different things, but there's not like a one size fits all blueprint. To manage stress. To manage stress, yeah. No, and I think um, one of the things that we would say, if you could try these five things to manage stress, they would be optimize your sleep. Eat a Always. whole yep. food diet, like avoid processed foods because mm. they are processed foods are another stressor on your body, like mm. particularly a lot of sugar. Um, make sure you're getting regular exercise, you're drinking enough water, and then practicing some kind of mindfulness or mm. journaling or something that helps you reconnect. Those are all going to be like baseline strategies that you can give a go. Like some of them are going to work better for people than others. Yeah. And there might be one that you find is magic for you and the others you can let them go. Mm -hmm. Hopefully not because they are all really great foundations to a healthy lifestyle. But those would be a great place to start yeah. for sure. Um, and then in terms of psychological stress, like I said, we all have that familiarity where we know we've got a deadline at work. We know that feels like stress or we know like having to deal I'm, with I'm just on a deadline by the way like no one ever died when the deadline didn't get met it's like bless your doctor bless your doctor <laughs> all right <laughs> okay well on Trello it is a due date it's not a deadline so you know I like the way they change that <laughs> but yeah. yeah it is putting things in perspective but something you might not have considered as one of those mental stresses is the fact that you're trying to lose weight mm -hmm. um, and there is actually a psychological concept called cognitive dietary restraint which is the process of thinking about reducing your calorie intake in order to achieve a weight loss goal. And there are many studies that show women who feel a strong level of cognitive dietary restraint yeah. also experience higher cortisol levels. Right. So that psychological pressure you're putting on yourself is causing that stress response. Even mm -hmm. though you don't think, oh, I'm stressing myself out by trying to be in a calorie deficit, if all you're doing is thinking about, is this going to be over my calories? Can I have this or can I not have that? Oh, how many calories are in this? If that's yeah. all you think about all day, mm -hmm. there's a very high chance that that's going to be acting as a stressor. Yeah, and I felt this like anytime I've done, I've done some pretty aggressive diets and not recommended in, in the past where I've done like a 2000 calorie a day deficit, you know, but just for a very short space of time, like, you know, 10 days to two weeks. But this, even before I've even said I'm going on a diet, like I start feeling hungry before I even start the diet. So, you know, like it's it, it's crazy like how your body and then your uh, how your mind then affects how your body feels and how you start to perceive food and, and, and everything. And yeah, like, you know, you can definitely feel that the, the, the stress is sort of cranked up and you you almost can't help how much you are thinking about food on a regular basis. Like you, you, you can't and there's almost like a natural physiological response to doing that like why like you say anybody wants to remain in homeostasis so you changing that and you psychologically acknowledging that you're changing that you know does almost put you into this sort of like farmer mentality where it's like i want to eat more i need to eat more yeah and that can feel really uncomfortable because your logical brain says you know i, I don't want to eat more though because i'm trying to lose weight yeah. but then your like primal brain is saying no, we no lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> no lose weight. Yeah. Um, and so then you become in this internal battle and you feel those are the moments where you make food choices that you don't want to and you feel helpless and you feel out of control. And part of that is also the stress response because when we are stressed, we do crave higher sugary foods, mm. higher calorie foods. 
Because if we go back all the way to what is happening in your body, you're designed to crave energy to be able to do something about that stressor. Yeah, which again, just makes that battle of weight loss harder. And, you know, we're not, we're not trying to talk about these things to say like, oh, it is, it's an impossible journey to go on and, and to lose weight. But it's sometimes it's just having these awareness that, yeah, you might be fighting against certain parts of, you know, your physiology and then that can impact your psychology and it can make it difficult, but that doesn't mean that you can't keep taking consistent steps forward. Yeah, and I think the really important thing is once you're aware that this is a thing, mm -hmm. is you can then start to adjust your thought processes around it. If you are one of those people, like you said, where you're like, right, as of Monday, that's it. I'm going in a deficit, going on a diet. And you notice that your reaction is you just suddenly start thinking about food all the time. That's probably a really good sign that the way you approach losing a few pounds mm -hmm. may need to change. Um, and so having that self-awareness allows you to reframe how you attack a diet phase and also how you even think about your body there's some really cool studies out there um one about like your body image and women who have strong beliefs about the importance of appearance and negative body image they also have higher levels of cortisol and so mm. then that feeds into well i have this stress response in my body i crave sugar i eat more sugar then I feel even more shit because I know I'm not helping myself. What I wanted to do was change my body and it just becomes a cycle. Mm -hmm. So being aware of how that isn't you being weak, it isn't you like failing, it's something that's happening between your head and your body interacting can help you then change that up. Yeah. Have you ever experienced any of this? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, and so like when we were saying about the cognitive dietary restraint earlier, that is where I used to live my life. Like mm -hmm. every single thing that I ate, I would be worried about like, is this going to cause me to put weight on in the morning when I get on the scale? Should I have that? Should I not have that? Mm -hmm. Everything had to be planned down to the nth degree. And if I ate something that wasn't on my plan, I would stress about it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure whoever's listening to this, if you have tried to lose weight before, you've probably gone to that place at one point. And you know what? It probably hasn't actually resulted in better results than just having the plan, letting it go, like as in like letting the stress go and just following it and trying not to sweat it too much. You've probably actually got better results when you let go of things a little bit. Yeah. But it takes that happening for you to believe. Mm -hmm. because you do feel like unless I'm on top of it and I'm really in control of every single thing, then why is this going to work? Yeah. Um, and so you put so much pressure on yourself. And then the other thing as well is that cycle of feeling stressed about it, feeling stressed that it's not going to work, ending up stress eating because that's a very unhealthy, like emotional eating response that I used to have. And then having guilt and shame and then having even more stress eating. And, cycle and continues. it was just this yeah. horrible cycle. Mm -hmm. And I might have like one or two days where I was like good in inverted commas. Mm -hmm. But that was through like sheer willpower, which just ran out. And yeah. then I'd go back to that stress, mm -hmm. emotional, shame, mm -hmm. misery. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. You see that a lot where people just want to try and like will their ways to results. So I just like have sheer determination to get through. And maybe one in a thousand people can do that. But like you know, the vast majority that I've seen just cannot do that. And that's why starting to create those strategies that allow you to stand the test of time are, are so important and crit critical for seeing success. Yeah, and it can feel really hard though if you've got those habits of thinking about food and being on a diet, in inverted commas, how to shift that and how to start thinking about it in a much less stressed way can feel like really alien. Mm -hmm. And when someone says to you, oh, you just need to trust the process or you just need to <laughs> accept like woo -woo, where you are. It? Yeah. it sounds such yeah. bullshit. Yeah. Trust the process. Well, how can I trust the process if I'm not actually following the process really carefully? Then how do I know it's going to work? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Um, and also this whole like body positivity movement like used to really piss me off because I was like, I yeah. can't be body positive. I don't like my body. I want to change my body. What are you yeah. talking about? Um, but actually, again, there's uh, loads of studies that show that having those emotions about your body, negative mm. emotions, cause a stress response and then feed into those emotional eating patterns. Sorry to interrupt, but we do want to be bringing you guys the very best content moving forward and even bigger and better guests. So we would really appreciate if whatever platform you're listening to, you subscribe, follow, because the bigger this podcast grows, the more and more guests we're going to be able to get on here for you and provide you even more value. So one of the things that um, I found really helpful for myself and I use with clients is, do you know what? Body positivity probably feels like a long way away. If that's mm -hmm. where you are, where I was, 
you're not going to suddenly stand in the mirror and go, oh, I just actually really love my body. Because mm. you don't. Yeah. Um, but actually body neutrality can be a nice stepping stone on the way. Mm-hmm. And that can be more like, just stop saying shit talk to yourself. Yep. Stop being nasty to yourself. Stop trying to find, every time you look in the mirror, something nasty to say. Mm-hmm. If you can't find anything nice to say, don't say anything at all, like your mum would say. Yeah. Um, and it can just be stating facts. So it can be like, instead of saying, I've got really huge legs, I've got really strong legs. Mm-hmm. It's neutral. It's not like I love my legs, but it's not talking yourself down. Yeah. And I think you just got to remember when, when you're talking about yourself in that way, like just try to pause in that moment and think about how you're talking to yourself. And like, would you say that to your best friend? Like, would you speak the way you're talking about yourself to your best friend? Like, would you be as as brutal and as critical as you are? And if the answer is no, it's like, why are you doing it to yourself? You know what I mean? Like you have to live with you and your mind and your body and it's it, it is literally the the only home and the greatest instrument that you own and it's like you know treat it with a little bit of respect and, and kindness because you deserve it yeah and i think that's a really good point because if your best friend did speak to you like that or your partner spoke to you like that you'd be like well this is an abusive relationship yeah you wouldn't tolerate <laughs> it yeah. No. yeah and that would be a very obvious stressor mm-hmm. and everyone around you would be like get out get yeah. out of that situation mm-hmm. If that's in your own head, you can't get out of it. So yep. you have to change it. Mm-hmm. Just like It's just like the way you would set a boundary with a person for doing that. You need to set that boundary with yourself. And it may be, it may have become a habit, unfortunately. Maybe it's like when you first get dressed in the morning or maybe it's at certain points. But like if you can raise the awareness of that being a, a habit, it's like put a, put a process in place that allows a trigger to happen. Like, oh, I've just started talking to myself negatively. Let's reverse that. Let's say something different and just try to catch yourself. And over time, you really can rewire um and and change your habits and and how you're showing up on a consistent basis yeah and that's the really cool thing with awareness is as soon as you start being aware it's almost like you don't have to try to change it because as soon as you start to notice your brain knows i shouldn't Mm. really be doing that yeah um and so it's almost effortless to nip it in the bud as soon as you start paying attention to it um so in terms of the stress of making significant changes Mm. and feeling like you're thinking about food all the time. Obviously, having a bit of a plan is useful because mm-hmm. you need to know how you're going to get to the end goal in order to trust the process. And one of the things that I found really helpful was if I did all my thinking and all my planning ahead, didn't have to think about every single food choice. Yeah. And it's one of the things that we definitely say to clients, right? Like plan your week, do your meal prep. <laughs> you want to just make it easy. So you want to just remove that decision fatigue. There's so many decisions that you have to make in a day already whether it's getting the kids ready getting yourself ready getting to work there's just so many different things that go on now when you get to lunch your lunch time you've probably made so many autopilot decisions but maybe a lot of other decisions along on side that when it's like right now what if i get it for food and i make these calories fit and these macros fit and it's just you know and then sometimes you just grab something and it's like oh, i grab something at, at 10 o'clock did i track that how much was in that and then you know before you know it you, you feel like you're trying to diet and you and you are to an extent in your own mind but you're not tracking maybe like 100 percent accurately or you forgot two or three things that happened in a day and then it's like that's not just like that wasn't just like a 50 calories or 100 calories that was like an extra 700 and then a week goes by and you don't lose weight and when you get stressed out i've tried so hard this week and i've not lose weight so you know set, being how does that famous saying go failing to prepare is preparing to fail um, and just understanding that like weight loss is a season it's not forever nobody needs to lose weight for the rest of life it is to to hit your goal and then go through a reverse and learn how to sustain and maintain so just putting in that, that extra effort to see that consistent weight loss um, and just a huge part of doing that is you know spending like an hour on a Sunday and just getting your shopping in maybe doing some prep tracking your food for the week and it, you, like how much more successful you would be for that Monday to Friday is is night and day yeah and it really does free up a lot of that headspace it does take away like you said that in the moment trying to do maths in your head of like can i even eat this yeah that cognitive dietary restraint is dialed down because Mm. you're just eating what you plan to eat same as if you plan to eat something when you weren't trying to lose weight Mm. you just made your lunch and then you just ate your lunch yeah i mean you see this with lots of different like hyper successful people as well who maybe aren't too bothered about like fashion they'll have like wear the same clothes all the time or like I see some women who literally like plan out every outfit that they're going to wear Monday to Friday on Sunday. And again, it's just like they're just in work mode for that week. And it's like, I don't want to be making decisions around what I've got to wear in the morning. I just want to like get up, get my shit done, 
outfit's ready, off we go. And it's like you just you are setting, you're priming your environment for success. And if a huge part of weight loss is nutrition and making sure that you've set that up for success, you know, you're gonna go into the week feeling confident. You're not gonna feel as like stressed around the dietary choices that you've got to make. Maybe you've got to avoid some temptation, but like if you've got to avoid temptation and you've got to track your calories and you've got to match this up and you don't know what you're eating, it's like so many extra like just issues to deal with instead of just being like, here's my plan. I've got to stick to it. And the other parts, maybe avoiding temptation, social situations, life, <laughs> you know, you've got a little bit more bandwidth to focus on that instead of 19 decisions around what you're eating that day. Yeah, absolutely. And when it comes to losing weight, you said, you know, nutrition is one part of that. Mm. And the other part is exercise or increasing your calorie out anyway. Um, for some people, that's something they just love doing and they just show up anyway because they do it for other reasons. But for other people trying to squeeze in some workouts or trying to make sure they hit their steps, that can also be a source of stress. So what would your yep. advice be to somebody who feels like that's just another thing to try and do? Again, it's, it's really about making it easy. So, you know, there's just lots of little things you could probably change in your lifestyle that bump up your steps per day or per week, which can actually make it like significantly easier to just be more active. So every time that you go to the shops, just park at the back of the parking lot, that can get an extra couple of hundred steps in. Uh, Steph parks at the back of, uh, back, uh, in the back of her car park and work. And I think just that alone gets her like an extra 5,000 steps in. And then like, you know, there's three or four done in work. And then all of a sudden she's doing 10K just because she parks at a certain place in the car parking space. And ironically, saves her a bit more money because that car park's cheaper than the one that's closer. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know, there's other ways where you can look at it. And like, that's kind of just a, an easy, like she doesn't have to think about getting more steps in. It's like, that's just what I do. And now it's just a part of how she shows up. And people can do that. They can get off the train and stop early, you know, and there's just little things that you can do that makes being more active easier. And then when it comes to, to exercise, getting some accountability to begin with is always huge, you know, if that's a trainer or signing up to classes or whatever else. Uh, but if you can find something that you enjoy, and I know it's really difficult for some people if they've never really enjoyed exercise, that's like a cheat code and hack, you know, you'll get people who go to the gym and jump on a Stairmaster for 45 minutes and scream, discipline, discipline. And it's like, that just to a lot of other people, it's just like, yeah, you're looking at me, aren't you? Um, you know, other people are just like, I couldn't think of anything worse. That is hell. Yeah, you. <laughs> but like, I've gone and played a uh, paddle or squash for like an hour and it's like just flies. It's like probably burnt more calories. Had a laugh, played competitive, having fun with some friends, social. And it's like, okay, so who's who's winning the exercise game there? The guy screaming discipline and this is so hard, you know, and this, this there, master, or the guy who's just had, or the girl who's just had fun playing squash or paddle or whatever for an hour. And it's like the latter, obviously. So, stuff like that is like a cheat code in terms of making exercise more enjoyable and fun the the part you have to get over is that if you don't have any sports or anything that you really enjoy you have to go and try stuff you have to dip your toes in and not just for a couple of sessions you have to try for like give it a, you have to give it like a couple of months like go and do something new for a couple of months and if you still really because everyone's awful in the beginning and we're all and we start to enjoy it once we get past that complete beginner phase and we start to get a little bit good you know we have a hit a shot or we make a move or we just feel like we're a little bit more confident in our ability to 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 play whatever that is and um it can really start to become a lot more enjoyable and, and addictive and it also is giving it time to build those social connections because mm -hmm. for a lot of people that play sport it is the social element that they go back for as well yeah which is you know a, another huge win in terms of just our emotional management Definitely. And exercise in itself, it is going to help with you managing stress just because of the way it helps you release stress hormones and gives you a dopamine hit. So it's like a counteract that mm -hmm. effect. But also when we come back to like the psychological elements of stress that we were talking about before, there's so many psychological changes or physiological changes in the brain that happen when you exercise that it also helps you manage when stress comes up through like life stuff because your brain actually changes when you exercise regularly. Mm. So areas of the brain that are associated with rational thought and with processing emotions get developed by exercising regularly. Um, there's also a really cool thing that where your hippocampus is where your brain's kind of like working out mm. emotions. Um, and anybody who doesn't exercise regularly, those neurons in the hippocampus are kind of like untrained muscles. Like they mm. don't really know how to react to stuff. 
Yeah. When you work out regularly, they get used a lot. And so they become more mature and mm. they know how to react. They know what is a real stressor and what isn't. So if you find you're reacting to imagined stressors or little things that shouldn't really stress you out but do, exercise can help your brain like mature and be able to deal with those better. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I, honestly, for people who, who don't exercise and feel like the weight of the world is on their shoulders and they've got all these problems and they're all so huge, like most people's problems in that sense, like if you just went for a 60-minute run, you'd probably just come back and you'd be like, oh, like, I'm not going to solve all your problems, but you'll damn well feel a hell of a lot better just going and getting a good sweat on, moving your body for 60 minutes and, and just getting your heart pumping. Like, it's it's wild what it does. I experienced that. Like, I, I can still have, like, three, four days off, which might not sound like a lot to some other people, but for me, that that is a lot. And I can really just feel, like, my mood's de-elevated. I can feel, like, these weight of these problems feel so... I mean, every time I do a workout and it's, like, something's just switched to my brain... And I'm like, oh, those problems are still there. They just don't feel as heavy. Or they just don't feel as big. Or I was just not being as logical and rational about them in my brain. And it still shocks me to this day, to the point where, like, even Sai or other people around me, the first thing they, if they ever clock me in, like, I lower mood, like, have you exercised? You literally <laughs> said that yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it, it's, it's because, you know, like, for me, it, it is that grounding thing. But I just, I've seen it with other people as well. It's, it's, it's literally, like, turns off frown upside down in a very cheesy way honestly it just it just does and that would be yeah it's just it's a miracle drug and yeah. really people should be doing it more and it's not just anecdotal so when you exercise your oxygen saturation in those parts of the brain for rational thought and for intellectual processing get improved mm -hmm. so you genuinely can process what's going on better during a run or yep. during a workout because your brain's getting the right oxygen to the right place to even think about it properly mm -hmm. and i have some of my best ideas when I'm exercising, because I, I, I work out first thing of the morning, no phone, and it's like sometimes my mind, once I'm like halfway through, it's just been like overdrive of creativity. I'm gonna like get my phone out, get my notes out, you know, writing a couple of ideas down. So even if, you know, for, for that, and I've heard a lot of uh, artists and comedians say like they found that the same, that, that like creative buzz that they get of, of ideas, you know, they kind of, they get into it when they're in like a middle of a workout session. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's because you get in that flow state as well, don't you? Like once you find a love for a certain modality of exercise, you get in a flow state whilst you're in that zone. Mm -hmm. And then your brain accesses other things of flow state as well. Yeah. And there's so much circulation going on, your heart's pumping, it's just, yeah. yeah. So obviously we love exercise <laughs> because that's what we do. Yeah. Um, but you know what, if you're not already an exercise lover, then give it a go. Like try some different mm -hmm. sports, try some different things. But there are other things that you can do to help address your stress. Um, and particularly one of the things that we really work on with clients is journaling because reframing how you perceive pot potential stressors is huge because a lot of what we react to is because it's a habitual response to something we perceive as a stressor. Yeah. Like you might experience one thing, I might experience the exact same thing, but our bodies interpret it at a different stress level. Yeah, we're all viewing the world through the, the lenses that we've viewed the world through to, to this point, you know what I mean? So it's, it's <laughs> that's why you can be at it, watch a film or you can watch us talk and have completely different experiences even though you're at the same thing because you're, you're viewing it through a slightly different lens but yeah i i don't journal that much but i have had times where i've felt overwhelmed and i'm like there's all this stress and stuff to figure out and i'm like it's like write it down and you write it down it's like oh it's five things <laughs> or it's oh actually they're the same so that's actually four and it's like oh okay i'll just start on one and it's not actually that bad and i think it does it, it really really does help just writing things down and yeah you've probably got a bit more of a general expert than me stace but that's <laughs> been at least my experience and i've seen with clients it's been a very yeah. healthy um healthy strategy to use in those situations yeah and even just that basic approach like you said of just getting whatever's swirling around in your head on paper mm -hmm. can really put it in perspective but if you want to take a more kind of structured approach to journaling and almost apply like the principles of CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, and just challenge your own thought processes. So what you write down, I mean, you've even described that that is basically what you did. You wrote it down and went, well, it's not actually that bad, is it? And actually, that's really the same thing as that. So you're still going through that process. Mm -hmm. But by putting it on black and white in paper in front of you, you can see it for what it is. Um, some people need a little bit more of a structure to be able to have that thought process take hold because the spiral in their head is so strong. Mm. 
And so being able to decide, right, I'm going to write these all down and I'm going to see, are they actual things that I have got the skills to deal with and write down how you would deal with them? Because Mm -hmm. when you see potential stressors actually as challenges that you have the resource to overcome, your brain shifts. Instead of it being like, well, this is an impossible thing that is just on me and I don't know what to do about it, to this is something that I can deal with and I know how and this is the plan, that level of control and of peace it just shifts you out of that stress response. Yeah. Do you journal yourself? Um, I don't journal, but Reese and I, me and my husband, we have like a, like a verbal journal every okay. night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we've got like five questions that we ask each other every night and we like work through it. So it's like, what are you grateful for today? What are you proud of? What would you do differently? Um, what did you love most about me today? Mm-hmm. Um, what did you love most about our little boy today? Um, yeah so we do that every night and it's just a way of reflecting and having it's a good connection time Mm -hmm. um for us but it's also our chance to like go through a bit of this like reframing our thought processes and reflecting on well i probably shouldn't have reacted like that and if it comes up again tomorrow i'm going to do this instead Mm -hmm. um so it's not sitting down with a book but it's the same premise yeah yeah no it's really good really powerful yeah so when it comes to it Everything that we've talked about has been about stress, but we're here at Body Smart to help people change their lives. But mostly people find us because they want to change their bodies. Yes. So if they put these things into practice, what would happen? If they were the, the things that we've spoken about, I, this is like a common review we get from uh, clients, which is I signed up for the weight loss, but then the weight loss become the positive side effect. And it's often by learning these good stresses and bad stresses and how it's actually helpful to do hard things and sometimes it's good to have self-awareness and dial things back and you know being able to manage that emotional and physical stress in a healthy way that works around the lifestyle that you want to live it's almost as if like your body just gets in check alongside that and that's like a huge part of what we do we completely focus on helping people become more self-aware setting a ground level of foundational healthy habits that have you know, a, a true and true. And, you know, th- yeah, you not only did they, they lose weight, they've built the skill set and the tools to be able to sustain the weight they've lost, but overall just feel so much healthier and happier within their bodies and mind. And they're not stressing about it the whole time. No. And that's, isn't that a great place to be? You know what I mean? Like I don't stress about food. I did used to stress about food, but I've taken the steps and, and learned the skills to make sure that that hasn't happened. And that's what we want to do with our clients. And and obviously for everyone listening, because it's exhausting because you do have to eat every day. So like if you are thinking about it like that much, like it can, you can almost feel like a, a prisoner in your own mind about just thinking about food all the time. And like I have definitely been there many, many years ago, but like to not be there anymore and for it to just be a second thought almost, just something that you do on autopilot is a really like liberating, freeing place to be. And we literally call it food freedom. Yeah. Like that's what we say. Our dream for all our clients is to find food freedom. Because it literally, you do feel free from that. You feel so light and free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and we've both been there, so we mm-hmm. both get it. And if that's something that you feel like, yes, I totally hear what you're saying, mm-hmm. then please do check out the link underneath the podcast description to find out more about our coaching. Everyone, thank you for listening. As always, we want this podcast to be the best of the best. So if you haven't gave us a review already, please scroll to the top or the bottom. Give us a review. Let us know what you think. And we'd love to hear from you.